Welcome to the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation CF Education Day webcast, Chronic Medications, Guidelines for CF Lung Health. This webcast is supported through an unrestricted educational grant from Genentech. I'm Leslie Hazel, Director of Patient Resources at the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. This webcast focuses on recommended medications for people with CF lung disease. To learn about CF research, nutrition, how to avoid germs, please watch an archived webcast on the Foundation's website. Joining me is Dr. Peter Mogazel, CF Center Director at the Johns Hopkins CF Care Center in Baltimore, Maryland. Welcome, Peter. Thank you for having me, Leslie. So let's start with what do you mean by chronic medications and what do you mean by guidelines? Well, chronic medications are therapies that patients with cystic fibrosis take on a regular basis in order to improve and maintain their lung health. The guidelines are recommendations developed by the CF Foundation to aid clinicians in prescribing these therapies. They're recommended because they have evidence showing that they're effective in individuals with CF. Where does this evidence come from? The evidence comes from published research studies looking at individual therapies. Okay. Well, how does CF affect the airways then? Well, cystic fibrosis is caused by a defect in CFTR which sits on the surface of cells, as you can see here in this picture, and transports chloride in and out of cells. When CFTR is not effective, then chloride doesn't go in and out of cells the way it should, and thick, sticky mucus develops in the airways. This leads to obstruction and bacterial colonization. So how does CF damage the lungs? The CF airway is normal at birth and becomes obstructed over time. The abnormal fluid transport in and out of cells leads to thick, sticky secretions which block the small airways. Then the bacteria that we all breathe in get stuck in the airways and cause damage. I want to show you a short video that illustrates this. The airway is lined with cilia that beat and move the mucus out of the airways so the bacteria that we breathe in are cleared. That's what we're going to see first in this video. The cilia beat to move mucus out of the airways. In patients with cystic fibrosis, the mucus is thick and sticky, as you can see here. It actually smushes the cilia so that it can't be cleared out of the airways. The bacteria accumulate and inflammation occurs. What's shown here is the lack of CFTR function and chloride not moving in and out of cells in the yellow, and then the absorption or overabsorption of sodium in the blue. We get cultures on a regular basis when patients come to clinic in order to determine which bacteria might be in the airways. The hope is that no bacteria that cause significant problems end up in the airways, but we know that eventually most patients will end up colonized with Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Initially, a first infection is treated with inhaled antibiotics to try to clear it, but we know that over time, multiple infections will occur over time, and eventually people will become colonized. It's this colonization that leads to inflammation and damage. The inflammation, the infection, and the increase in uh, thickness and secretions leads to airway obstruction. The obstruction can occur at any age, but it's only when people become older, when kids are five or six, that we can actually measure lung function and determine the degree of obstruction that's there. The FEV1 of the forced expiratory volume on the first second is the measure that's most commonly used to monitor airway obstruction. So what are the recommended medications for CF and what do they do? There are a number of medications that are recommended for cystic fibrosis. We use antibiotics to treat the first infection and try to eradicate that, but also to treat chronic infection with Pseudomonas aeruginosa. The idea is to suppress the infection and decrease inflammation and airway damage. There are therapies to thin out the secretions so that mucus clearance can be improved. Hypertonic saline is a salt water solution with a high concentration of salt that pulls water back into the airways to hydrate the mucus. Ivacaftor is an oral medicine that is effective for certain patients with cystic fibrosis due to a G551D CFTR mutation. It activates CFTRs at the cell surface to restore uh, chloride transport. Inflammation can be treated by ibuprofen or azithromycin, and airway obstruction is treated with inhaled Dornase alpha, which thins out the secretions by breaking down DNA that's left over in the airway from dying white cells and bacteria. 
well, what are the goals for a person with CF who might be on these medications? What do you want to see in their lung health? Well, the primary goal is to try to improve lung function and slow the progression of disease, to maintain the FEV1 over time and thereby improve survival. We want to decrease symptoms, have less coughing and shortness of breath, and improve the quality of life of individuals with CF so they can do what they want to do with few symptoms. Explain a little bit more about the slow the progression of lung disease. We all lose lung function as we get older. In cystic fibrosis, that just happens faster. This graph shows the decline in lung function over time using FEV1 as a marker. The goal of the therapies is to try to slow this progression of lung disease so that over time, people have fewer symptoms and live longer. So you talked about some of the different medications, but is there one or any more strongly recommended than the other? There are. There are a number of medications that are strongly recommended by the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation, and that's because they have more evidence showing that the medications are effective in individuals with CF. Inhaled tobramycin is an antibiotic designed to treat chronic pseudomonas infection. It comes as a nebulized form or as a dry powdered inhaler. Inhaled as trianam is another antibiotic that's used chronically to treat pseudomonas infection. And Dornase Alpha cleaves DNA to make the secretions less uh, thick and sticky. All these medications are strongly recommended for individuals with moderate to severe lung function with an FEV1 that's less than 70% of predicted. Ivacaftor is effective for individuals with cystic fibrosis due to a G551D mutation and should be used in those patients that have at least one G551D mutation. Well, what about the other therapies? There are another, a number of other therapies that are effective. Inhaled tobramycin as trianam and dornase alpha are also effective in individuals with mild lung disease. Hypertonic saline can be used to thin out secretions in uh, individuals with any lung function to decrease exacerbations and improve lung function. Ibuprofen is effective in children 6 to 17 who have lung function with an FEV1 greater than 60 percent. And azithromycin can be used as an anti-inflammatory medication, and it's typically given three times a week. Azithromycin is usually an antibiotic that people without CF get for an infection. Why is it effective in CF? Well, that's right. In addition to its antibiotic properties, azithromycin is also uh, anti-inflammatory. And that's the function or the thing that we're using it for in this case. Doesn't the FDA have a warning about azithromycin and heart arrhythmias? The FDA has recently come out with a warning for azithromycin, but used as we are using it for anti-inflammatory therapy, we don't believe it poses a significant risk to cystic fibrosis patients. However, uh, patients should talk to their care providers to determine if it's the right medication for them and to balance the benefits and the potential risks. So should everybody with CF be on all of these medications? No. Therapy has to be individualized. These are recommendations determining which therapies are actually effective, but not every patient needs to be on every therapy. And again, that individualized care is something that should be discussed between patients and families and their care providers. How are these guidelines kept up to date? Um, the guidelines are uh, reviewed on a regular basis uh, to determine which new medications should be included and also to look at research on uh, therapies we've already reviewed. There are also some therapies that shouldn't be recommended, that shouldn't be used in CF care. They include oral steroids um, for patients age 6 to 18 because of the significant side effects. We're not sure if this medication is actually effective in adults. Inhale steroids for people that don't have asthma and anti-staphylococcal antibiotics for preventing infection. Again, it's unclear if this medication or these medications are effective in those already colonized with Staph aureus. More research needs to be done to try to figure that out. So we've talked about medications for CF lung health, what's recommended, what's strongly recommended, and what's not recommended. Where can the CF community find this information and these guidelines? Uh, all the guidelines are available at cff.org, the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation website. You can find all of the CF Foundation's guidelines on the Foundation's website under Treatments, CF Care Guidelines. 
Thank you, Peter, very much for giving us some great information about recommended chronic medications for people with CF lung disease. This concludes the CF Foundation's Education Day webcast on chronic medications. I would like to thank you for watching, Peter for explaining the information, Rick Vasta and the technical crew, Melissa Chin, Genentech for their unrestricted educational grant, and the CF Foundation for making this webcast possible. Thank you.